Hello and welcome to GD Live at PALS with teacher Alex for another GD science lesson. Today's topic is physical and chemical properties of substances and the different states of matter. So first of all, what are physical properties? There are over 100 different elements, each with a unique arrangement of protons, neutrons and electrons. Scientists use a chart called the periodic table to arrange the elements by their atomic number. Each square of the periodic table supplies four important facts, as shown in the following illustration. The atomic number, the element symbol, the element's name and the atomic mass. If you want to know more about these things, there is another full lesson on um, this topic. In the periodic table, the elements are organized according to their physical and chemical properties. Metals with similar properties are grouped together on the left side of the table and non-metals are grouped on the right side of the table. We can see that here, here is an example of the periodic table. Very simple, we only see the atomic number here, starting with the first element in the top left corner, hydrogen, and going from left to right, helium, the second element, and one row down and from left to right again. We see the metals with the reddish, pinkish colors. They take most of the periodic table. And so-called metalloids, which have properties of both metals and non-metals, and the non-metals on the right side. There are a lot more metals as non-metals, as already said. And as suspected, the metalloids are in between the metals and the non-metals. Chemical properties include the flammability of a substance, the combustibility, and the combustibility means the reactivity uh, reacting with oxygen and the reactivity with other chemicals. These properties are observed when one substance interacts with another substance. The physical property can be noted without observing how the substance interacts with others, like color, or the melting point, Density are a few examples of physical properties. Density in particular is a characteristic physical property of a substance. It is the relationship between the substance's mass and its unit volume. Remember that the volume is how much space a substance takes up. Density can be found by taking the mass of an object and divided by its volume. Objects with the same volume but different masses will obviously have different densities. Here are some examples of physical and chemical physical properties of metals and nonmetals. Metals are usually considered strong, whereas nonmetals are usually soft and brittle. Metals are malleable and ductile, nonmetals are brittle. Malleability and ductility means that metals can be bent into shape or stretched into wires, whereas nonmetals usually tend to break. For example, sulfur is a very powdery yellowish solid, yellow solid. It can't be bent into shape. If you try to bend it, it will break into smaller pieces, whereas you for sure know from metals that they can be bent a lot without breaking easily. Metals usually have high melting and boiling points. They're solids at room temperature. We need to heat them up a lot until they melt, most of them. Whereas non-metals usually have low melting and boiling points. Many of them are gases at room temperature. Metals react with oxygen to form basic oxides, for example, magnesium oxide or sodium oxide. Whereas non-metals react with oxygen to form acidic oxide, like sulfur dioxide or the, the oxides of nitrogen or carbon dioxide. All these oxides of nonmetals can react with water to form acids. Sulfur dioxide will react with water to form sulfuric acid. Nitrogen oxides will react with water to form nitric acid. Carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid. Metals are usually good conductors of electricity and heat. This is due to their bonding. There is another lesson on bonding between atoms, whereas nonmetals are poor conductors of electricity and heat. 
Metals are usually shiny, whereas nonmetals are dull, they don't shine. Metals have high densities, nonmetals have low densities. When metals form ions, they form positive ions since they lose electrons to become stable, whereas nonmetals usually gain electrons and form negative ions. Hydrogen is an exception here, or nonmetals can as well share electrons to get stable. If you want to know more about the formation of ions and bonding between atoms, please have a look at the lesson about atomic bonding and the atomic structure. Let's have a look at the different states of matter and the kinetic theory. The states of matters are considered as physical properties. Solids have particles packed in regular patterns and are very dense usually. There's very, very little space between the particles and the particles can only vibrate about their fixed position. Most metals, such as gold and silver, are in a solid state at room temperature. When a solid is heated, its particles gain energy. They vibrate more strongly, then it need a little bit more space and they expand. This is called thermal expansion. When the particles reach the melting point, they break away from their position and enter the liquid state. Liquids take the shape of the bottom of their container in which they are placed, meaning that the particles are not in a fixed position and they can move around freely and randomly sliding past each other. Liquids are less dense than solids because there is a small amount of space between the particles. Mercury, a metal, and bromine, a nonmetal, are in a liquid state at room temperature. The only two elements on the periodic table that are liquid at room temperature. When a liquid is heated to the boiling point, the particles gain energy and expand, changing state into gas. When the particles contain even more energy, evaporation can take place. When liquids are cooled, they can solidify and enter the solid state. Another word for solidifying is freezing. Gases have very low densities because there are huge amounts of space between the particles. The particles <coughs> Uh, move around freely and randomly. Gases, gases and gases are easily compressed and have no fixed shape, filling up whatever space available. Many non-metals, including helium, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, are in the gaseous state at room temperature. When the gas is cooled, the particles lose energy, causing them to move more closely together because they move slower until the gas becomes a liquid due to forces of attraction between the now closer particles. So here a summary of the changes of state. Let's start with a solid. When the solid is changing to liquid, it is melting. When the liquid changes to gas, it's evaporation. And when a gas changes to a solid, we call this deposition. When a solid changes to a gas, it's sublimation. When the gas changes to liquid, it's condensation, and a liquid becoming a solid is freezing or solidification. Liquids can as well boil at the boiling point to change into the gaseous state. There are differences between evaporation and boiling, but we will not have a look at these in this presentation. Freezing, condensation and deposition are exothermic processes, which means energy is given off to the surrounding when this happens, whereas melting, evaporation and sublimation are processes that require energy to happen. They are endothermic processes. You probably know that from holding an ice cube in your hand. You're hand will cool down in the process while the ice cube melts. The melting of the ice takes heat energy from your hand. Okay, let's have a look at some questions together. Complete the statement with the appropriate number answer. The density of a metal with a volume of 30 millimeters, milliliters and a mass of 120 kilogram is 
we keep the units the same. This is going to be 120 divided by 30, which is 4 kilogram per milliliter. Which of the following elements is not a solid at room temperature? We have seen in... So all of these are metals, gold, silver, mercury and nickel. We have learned in the presentation that there are only two elements which are liquid at room temperature and these two elements are bromine, a non-metal, and the metal mercury. So the correct answer here is C. Which change of state occurs when a liquid is cooled and the particles lose energy and stop moving? Stop moving freely. They will still vibrate. That change of state is... Yes, correct. It is solidification. Another correct term here would be freezing. I hope I could teach you something about physical and chemical properties and the states of matter today. This was teacher Alex with GD Life at PALS. The subject was GD Science. Have a good day and I hope to see you next time.